Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLachlan and I'm so pleased to have discovered just in the nick of time what day it is today and to be able to spend some of this very special day with you. Happy Pronouns Day everybody! Just for one day, let's forget about all the people dying of COVID-19, about crazed nutters murdering elected representatives, all the unhappy things going on in the world. Let's forget them and think about what really matters to so many of my fans. I call them fans because they do take time out of their precious days sometimes to comment beneath my videos and they don't let things like women and girls being molested and traumatized by the presence of entitled men in what should be single sex spaces bother them in the slightest. They don't care about the falsehoods and abuse by certain trans people right here on YouTube. And she's a lying fucking piece of shit. <laughs> No, what bothers them is that when I talk about these lying, abusive YouTubers, I use the correct pronouns, the ones that refer to their sex. Now, the first thing I want to say, in case anyone thinks I'm joking, is that it really is International Pronouns Day today. It is a real thing, seriously. And before I forget, Maya Fullstutter has, on this special day, marked it by launching a guide to pronouns at work, which I haven't had time to read yet, but I will link to it below. I wrote a blog post about Pronouns Day a couple of years ago, so I'm going to be drawing on that blog because I haven't had time to think about or plan any jolly activities to highlight the day this time. Last year, I was blissfully unaware of the day altogether. Unfortunately, I missed this sweet little reminder tweeted by a friend of mine, but two years ago I indulged in a bit of Wikipedia vandalism, which was such fun. The page I vandalised was entitled International Pronouns Day, and it was atrocious. It was so incredibly biased. The good and somewhat surprising news is that the page is no more. When I looked for it, I was redirected to a page about preferred pronouns, which is a lot more objective in tone. Of course, I would question why they need to have a page devoted to such an irredeemably silly subject in the first place. The thing to remember for the future is that International Pronouns Day is held annually on the third Wednesday of uh, October. It started in 2018 and it's supposedly celebrated on every continent except Antarctica. That's probably because the residents of Antarctica are too sensible to take notice of such unbelievably self-indulgent first world human concerns. So the website pronounsday.org has a page called participating and I quote, this page has ideas you can utilize in developing your local activities. Seriously, you expect people to spend time in local activities about pronouns? Yes, they do. I'll just read a couple of the suggestions. Set up a table and photo booth in a medium high traffic area and encourage people to take a picture and hold up their written pronouns. Share on social media with express permission. Oh, do it! I would love to have some pictures on the pronouns page of my website. Yes, of course, I have a pronouns page of people behaving like that. What a laugh. Write and send a press release. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, and share with reporters why this day matters for your local communities. Yes, my local community really needs something to get worked up about. The last notable event that happened here was months ago now, and that was only a 16-year-old boy being chased down and stabbed to death by a gang on my local high street. What was the last event before that? Oh yeah, two people getting stabbed and airlifted out of the park across the road from me. As someone who was a community worker in my local community for nearly a decade, I got to meet quite a lot of people in my local community. They included survivors of the Jewish Holocaust and of the Srebrenica massacre and refugees from a whole range of human catastrophes, as well as families bereaved by drug-related gang wars. 
Can you imagine how they would feel being told that one of the big issues of today that they need to care about is pronouns? These suggestions get ever more bizarre, so stuff them. As I said, I get comments from people objecting to the fact that I won't go along with any part of gender ideology in my videos. It seems they don't get that the reason that I set up my Pete Trans website and this YouTube channel is to expose and challenge gender ideology, not to submit to it. Look, if someone said to me, praise the Lord, I'd probably have to be in America for someone to come out with that outside a church, right? I've never seen it here, but wherever it happened, I wouldn't respond with praise him or amen or anything like that because I don't do Christianity unless they were holding a gun to my head, which wouldn't be very Christian of them, would it? And it's the same with gender ideology. I don't do it. So to take one example, stop misgendering Samantha. She's just living her best life. If you don't like Samantha, don't watch her videos. I don't think you quite understand the point of my channel. Blah, blah, blah. Samantha is a woman. Her pronouns are she, her, deal with it. I won't pretend to believe that a man can be a woman or vice versa any more than I will pretend to believe in the Christian or any other God. So how about you respect my views? And if you don't like them, you don't watch my videos. Samantha is a man who promotes falsehoods to the detriment of women and children. That's living his best life, is it? He gets no respect from me. Deal with that. It beggars belief how many commenters do not engage with the arguments I make in my videos, but still feel the need to comment, often quite rudely, on what is the fundamental difference in our views. But they make no attempt to present a counter argument. All they've got is assertions. So here's an example. Samantha is a woman, not a man. Get it right, or are you just too old and need to go into a nursing home? Oh, that contribution will really persuade me. Uh, I'll just show one more that takes a different tack. Very sad that you cannot use legally correct pronouns. Well, it's not that I can't, it's that I choose not to. And what is legally correct pronoun supposed to mean anyway? There is no law where I'm from compelling me to use one word rather than another. The fact that there are such laws in other places is deeply sinister. There should be no place in any free society for laws that enshrine falsehoods and compel people to go along with them in their speech. That is just outright rude and defamatory. Well, it's not defamatory. Defamation is when you say something about someone that is untrue and can damage their reputation and standing, like the trans YouTubers I respond to do. As for rude, well, yes, telling the truth can be rude, but sometimes it's important to tell it anyway. Before I explain why, I just want to say that just as I won't tolerate anyone policing my speech, I won't do it to anyone else. I'm not talking about people being abusive here. Yeah, if you are repeatedly abusive or just insulting in the comments here, I may well end up banning you or rather hiding you from the channel, which means you can carry on talking to yourself, but nobody sees your comments except you. Is there anyone watching that that's happened to? Oh, sorry, no point in answering because I won't see your comment. What I'm talking about are gender critics and feminists who I like, or at least respect, using preferred pronouns for trans people. I believe some of the writers, the journalists and authors have to do it, or they just won't get their works published. Some people may have to do it or get fired. I can imagine situations where I might have to do it for my own safety. I think it's far more likely that a trans cultist than a Christian would put a gun to my head. Trans activists are deluding themselves if they think that everyone who goes along with preferred pronouns is doing so out of respect or because they actually believe the person being referred to is what they claim to be. People are being forced to submit so as not to be cancelled or lose their livelihoods or because they fear assault. I have no doubt that that is a bit of a power trip for the gender nutters, but the fact that 
pronoun use is forced is why an increasing number of us are rebelling. I'm also aware that some gender critics go along with preferred pronouns for some trans people, the ones that are respectful and supportive to women, but not to the ones telling us to perform fellatio and die in a fire. And that was my position for a while, even after I hit peak trans, even after I was assaulted. So I'm not going to criticise other people because they haven't yet reached the stage that I'm at and maybe never will. People have to come to their own decisions and being human, they probably won't respond well to being harangued. I also get the argument that if you show the respect they want you to, they are more likely to engage with your views and give you a fair hearing. I have never found this to be the case when I took this approach. Obviously, if I'd called my assailant she in court, the judge might have been more sympathetic to me, but his attempt to get me to treat my violent woman-hating assailant as if he were female peak trans so many people so big silver lining there is no incentive to me to willingly go along with someone's preferred pronouns and quite a lot of disincentives the first one is that it offends me greatly it triggers me for those who say it's triggering for trans people to be so-called misgendered i'm very triggered when i read reports of male criminals doing horrible things often sex crimes and being referred to as she because they claim to be women to report on a rape of a woman by a man as if it were committed by a woman is so contemptuous of the victim her male attacker gets more respect than she does secondly it is obvious to me now from the mere fact that people who aren't even trans get so angry and shocked about what they call misgendering that using preferred pronouns has a sort of brainwashing effect. As Kelly J. Keane said recently on the radio, once we start calling a man she, it becomes more difficult to argue that she can't access women's spaces and sports. And I am very persuaded by the article by Barra Carr, or Kerr, well, however she pronounces it, um, that article entitled Pronouns Are Rahipnal that she wrote a few years ago. So she said, they dull your defences, they change your inhibitions. They're meant to. You've had a lifetime's experience learning to be alert to him and relax to her for good reason. This instinctive response keeps you safe. It's not even a conscious thing. I think her piece is very powerful, actually, especially um, the end when she says, I want to be alert. I want others to be alert. I want people to see the real picture. And I want those instinctive reactions that we feel when something is wrong to be unblunted, undulled by this cheap but effective psychological trick. I feel like I owe this to myself and I absolutely owe it to other women. And more than anything, I owe this to girls. I don't want to play even the tiniest part in grooming them to disregard their natural protective instincts. Those instincts are there for a reason, to keep them safe. They need those instincts intact and sharp. And that's why I won't use preferred pronouns. Well, I don't think I need to say any more, do I? Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of pronoun day bye